Good day, welcome to Great White Retro. I'm Gord Fessick and this is my cat tuxedo. Our topic today is finishing touches on this Atari 400. We got it working, now we gotta put it back together and see what we can do about running some modern software on this thing. Let's get her done. Finally, we can get around to case cleaning, including getting rid of this label that's up front. Not that label there. I really didn't want to destroy that serial number label, but that DOM label had a label on the inside shield as well, so I didn't need that. First, I ran it through the sink, just with good old soap and water. I tried to use some alcohol afterward, but it didn't make much of a difference. Uh, there wasn't any grease or anything on these case pieces. Still, a quick once over just to make sure and well I didn't see anything odd on there. I followed that up with some baking soda. That got the remaining grime off of the surface of this case. I can see why David Murray loves this stuff. It does get into the texture of the case without actually damaging the texture of the case. And there's the outer case compared to that lid, which I haven't finished scrubbing yet. Now it's time to take the lid apart. First off, the catch here comes off with just a regular, not even a regular screwdriver, but just the, the tip that holds bits normally comes off of there, just like that. And then the lid is spring-loaded, so I thought, okay, I'm going to be careful when I take this thing off. So I take these two mounting screws off of the hinges and, well, snap! <laughs> <laughs> Oops. I didn't lose the spring, fortunately, but the hinge went flying. I was able to recover it, however. Now, I've seen a few example Atari 400 cases where this metal bit here came off just way too easily. In fact, I'm able to take it off with my fingers here. There we go. That's some pretty weak adhesive there. So I ended up using uh, some alcohol to try to get those cleaned up, and I'll put my own replacement adhesive on there later on. Alcohol was able to get the foam off, but I had a heck of a time just trying to get the adhesive off of there as well. I was scrubbing and I was scrubbing and I was scrubbing. I was mostly pushing it around rather than actually trying to take it off of there. In the end, WD-40 worked better than <laughs> alcohol for getting this adhesive off. I have no idea how that worked, but hey, I have seen this done and well, at least it made a bigger dent, and it was able to get at this adhesive. At least push it off to the side where alcohol was able to remove the remainder of it. So that's one half of it. Turns out that these metal bits on the case lids have their own Atari part number. There we go. I followed that up by also using alcohol and WD-40 on the plastic part of that lid. And finally, with some baking soda to clean off uh, any of the remaining bits of adhesive or alcohol or WD-40 or anything else that was left. Again, that DOM sticker came off of there because there was a DOM sticker on the metal shield. I didn't see a reason to have it on there twice. We already know this is an Atari 400 for the domestic market. I can only guess that's what the DOM sticker meant. There we go. Just a little bit of soap and water afterward to finish the job. A good rinse. And here are all of the external case pieces. Now, I was going to try retro brighting this thing, but uh, I was really cautious about that label on the back. But I did have this Atari 410 tape drive. It is actually more yellowed than the rest of the computer, so I thought I'd make the attempt at retro brighting the cassette drive. That way I figured if I made any mistakes with the cassette drive, I wouldn't repeat those mistakes on the computer itself. When we reconnect these, let's make sure, in fact, here. We can even separate this. So with the, with the transformer facing this way, the labeled wire is up here and the not labeled wire is down here and the connections back to the tape drive are here. So that should help us put it back together in the correct order. 
I also noticed that the adhesive left a significantly lighter spot on the case plastic for the tape drive, so I hope that retro brightening did actually would have an impact on this. I did do my normal procedure, which is the UV and slop sink tank and hydrogen peroxide, 35%. I left that case piece in there for five hours, and while it did brighten it up, as I feared, it also ruined that uh, paper label on the bottom. The serial number is now illegible, however, that at least proved to me that the computer case did not require any retro brighting. Even shining a bright light and adjusting the camera's uh, input filter to just confirm, yep, sure enough, those are a very close match, if not an exact match. Okay, so before we put this thing back together, I want to tune the color output on the Atari 400. There's a dial on the card. So I fired up uh, this thing here called uh, APE. It is an Atari serial port emulator. And this thing can emulate disk drives, printers, tape drives, anything that can plug into a, an Atari SIO port, this thing can emulate. And yeah, it says unregistered uh, delay. I paid for the registered version of this thing, but as of this recording, I still don't have a valid registered copy of this software. I'm thinking, how 1980s can you get here? Between these guys and Best Electronics, I wonder if they're holding a competition for a most retro website. <laughs> anyway, I was able to mount uh, an image that had some graphic demos here that I was going to use to try to tune the video card on there. So that is the SIO to PC USB version, and that's a very short SIO cable plugged into the A400. And with the basic cartridge uh, ins inserted, you can actually boot off of bootable uh, disks or, dim or images or whatever. And that sound you're hearing looks like it's coming off of the SIO port. Apparently that's something that actually happens on real A400s and A800s. Anyway, now that I know what I'm trying to load, I'm trying to load GTIA TST. And boy, if you thought load star comma eight comma one was obscure, <laughs> I had to look for an Atari DOS manual just to learn how to use this thing. <laughs> anyway, the mode 11 test gives me some color bars that work much like the salt cartridge does. I couldn't get the salt cartridge to run, but at least I got this. This will give me a good way to tune the color. I would match this against the colors produced by an emulator running on the PC. First thing I would do is I'd make sure that my monitor was in the, in the same mode between both HDMI and audio video in. So okay, that's what AV looks like. That was composite. And here's HDMI. Oh, there we go. I just dropped the remote. <laughs> anyway, this is Altria. Let me just make sure. Altira Basic. There we go. This is an Altira emulator. It's using its own version of the ROMs, and that's why it says Altira Basic and not Atari Basic. And we'll fire up the Mode 11 test. And then what I'll do is I'll set the monitor to be the same uh, color mode on here, so I can switch back and forth, and then I can adjust the, the small potentiometer on the CPU card so that the two will match, or at least match as closely as I can get it to. At first, I tried doing it over the composite video. One thing I noticed, though, is if I left the 400 alone for a bit, it would kind of go into a screensaver mode. And I'm like, hmm... Is there something wrong with my GTIA chip? And I'm like, wait a minute, this can't be right. But then I tried pressing a key, yep, it came out of it. Must be the screensaver mode. <laughs> anyway, I couldn't get as crisp of a picture as I could with composite video, so I found an S-video cable and I plugged that in. That actually did make a difference, as you'll see shortly. Okay, yeah, this is me trying to dial it one way or another. Okay, more. Okay, orange on the right, green, yellow on the left. Okay, it looks right. That's probably as good as I'm going to get it, even with S video. Uh, those those uh, artifacts are just going to be a problem until 
we get everything all sealed up. And then it should be better, I think. So with the graphics tuned, I make an attempt at running some of the demo software on here. Just for expediency, I've accelerated the video coming from the real hardware. What you're looking at is not the emulator speed. This is the regular PC, but it's playing at two times regular speed. the video as tuned as I was going to get it, it's time to put this case back together. First I put some new feet on the bottom here. I only lost one foot, but those black feet would have just left marks on whatever surface I was working on. There's that shield that goes on the flap there. I used some double-sided mounting tape to put it on there. This is a very similar ad uh, adhesive to what was on there, but I'm hoping that this mounting tape will last a little longer. I can always find some other means if this ends up not working out. But when I put the metal shield on the underflap of this door, it seemed to hold just fine. Although I took a heck of a long time just trying to get the, the red backing off of this stuff. <laughs> Come on. Why am I having such a hard time with this? There we go. So the metal shielding is back on the door. Now it's time to put the door back on the metal shield, the rest of the metal shielding. We got that tab installed there, and I was being careful with that spring there. I ended up having to go to another YouTube video to watch someone else learn how to assemble this thing. Now where was I going to run this audio video cable? I couldn't run it out the back. I ended up deciding to run it out in the same port as where the power switch is. That seemed to give me the most room so I could still mount the shielding to this case. I'm going to have to find a better solution for this at some point, but at least I was able to cinch down all of the all of the shielding after that, including that spacer to protect the underside of the board from shorting out. Getting those screws in was pretty tough. I'm guessing that, uh, I don't remember it being that tight, but apparently it was. But yeah, it was not quite fitting right, and of course that was because of that wire hanging out the side. But I was able to get it tightened down, and there was still some play in that wire, so that'll have to do for now. There we go, we can mount it into the case, and we'll get that power supply board over here. Make sure that the, the, the little ribbon for my audio video cables fits under the power switch, and that the power switch does not interfere with it. It seemed to work just fine, and there were two more screws that go into the plastic here. That will secure the power supply board back to the case. This was a pretty interesting build, I gotta tell you. <laughs> Working with that metal shielding, that is as thick as, well, it's gotta be at least an eighth of an inch thick. That's pretty tough shielding. I'm guessing the FCC was pretty strict about RF emissions at the time. And there's that all-important switch for removing cartridges that turns the power off. And just to make sure before I button everything up for good, I check the audio and video one last time. Composite video and S-video were both working as intended. Not bad, not bad at all. Now we can finally see about putting the speaker back, putting that horrible keyboard back, <laughs> and then getting the case cover back on. One last check, just to make sure that the keys still worked, Good, good. The keys are working, the speaker's sitting in its right spot, and now I can finally put this case cover back on 
and button this computer up, at least for now. There was that little tab on the keyboard, I did get that fixed later on. Anyway, with this thing finally put back together, let's try out some games that came with uh, the the ATE and the serial and the serial IOTA PC. coming but this Atari 400 is done. I still have a tape drive to put back together and maybe a little bit of tuning here and there because this is pretty kludgy but we'll get that fixed up eventually. On the next episode we'll take a look at some findings that we got from Winnipeg, Manitoba. Until then, good day. <laughs>